Hi, welcome back to Book Chats from Lonzo Public Library. Uh, today we're going to be talking about YA books, that's young adults for those of you not in the know, uh, specifically about young adult books dealing with um, teens on the LGBTQIA plus um, universe. Um, so we're living in a golden age of young adult books. The quantity, the quality is just better than at any other time in history. So much so that a lot of adults, including me, sometimes read them. Um, and one of the great things that they're accomplishing is they really are good at representation in a way that, again, certainly when I was a kid, it was, you know, all white kids, all straight white kids, mostly pretty well off. <laughs> so now there's um, something for everybody. And we all know, I think, that it's really important for everybody to see themselves, um, and that's particularly true for teenagers um, who are forming their identities. They really need to see themselves being portrayed, and particularly being portrayed in a positive way. If you never see people like you on TV, or you never read about people like you in books uh, having a happy ending, being successful, finding love, then it's harder to imagine yourself able to do that. And it's particularly hard for those LGBTQ kids who are still more likely to be bullied, they're still more likely to attempt suicide. Um, so that's enough seriousness. Let's talk about some fun books. Uh, I'm going to start with Two Boys Kissing by David Levithan. What's more fun than that? <laughs> um, and it's loosely based on a true story about uh, two boys... Harry and Craig, two 17-year-olds, who are about to take part in a 32-hour marathon of kissing to break the Guinness World Record, which, boy, does that make my lips feel dry. Uh, but it's, it's an interesting book. It's poetically told. It's not just um, a straightforward story. It's narrated by what um, one reviewer called a Greek chorus, which I thought was lovely, of men who had died of, of the AIDS crisis. Um, but it's not a sad story. It's a lovely story about these two boys and their friends and um, coming of age and finding love. So, and uh, particularly, you know, this one's, it's not really old, it's about a decade old, but it was rarer then to, to find uh, such a happy story. Uh, speaking of which, The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth is another one. It's only about a decade old, which makes it a little too early to call it a classic, um, but it kind of com comes close. Um, it's about Cameron Post, who's, as you might, get, might have guessed from the title, um, she's got it tough. Um, it's hard enough coming of age in the 1990s and realizing that you're gay, uh, but she loses her parents and has to move in with her conservative Aunt Ruth and her old-fashioned grandmother in a small town in Montana. So um, she's struggling to fit in and having feeling like she has to maybe hide who she is. Um, and then a beautiful cowgirl moves to town. Um, and just when it seems like their friendship might become something more, her Ruth, her Aunt Ruth, um, sends her to conversion camp, which is a very real thing that has happened to kids and in some places is still happening. Um, but it is ultimately a hopeful and happy book, so don't worry. I picked all happy endings. Um, and then I'm going to talk about a couple of books by Mackenzie Lee. Uh, the first one is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. I mean, don't you want to read it already? Uh, it's about Henry Monty Montague, who is not exactly the heir his 18th century noble father wants. He's, uh, he's young, he's rich, he's hedon hedonistic, hedonistic, hmm. uh, and he's bisexual. Um, so he is expected by his father to settle down and take over the family holdings. Uh, but before that, he decides to go on a grand tour and make it the most fun ever um, with his best friend, Percy, on whom he happens to have a hopeless crush. Um, but so, in the midst of their adventures, they, one of Monty's reckless decisions gets them into trouble, and it turns their uh, story into a bit of a manhunt. 
a little more exciting than they had had um, planned. But it all works out. And then there's the sequel, the Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy, uh, which is about Monty's sister Felicity, who was a minor character in the first book. Could not be more different than her brother. Um, she's serious and intellectual, where he's kind of flighty, and she's asexual, where he is bisexual, which is um, a category that you don't see portrayed a lot, so it's kind of cool. Um, and she has her own exciting adventures. Um, she, after, after getting swept up into Monty's drama, uh, she returns home with two unshakable goals. One, not to get married. Two, become a doctor, which not so easy for a woman, especially back then. Um, she sees an opportunity to get away when she finds out that an old friend of hers is marrying a doctor in Germany who she respects very much, uh, but the only way to fund the trip is accepting an offer from a mysterious woman, which ends up getting her involved in a dangerous adventure of her own. So, adventures! Um, and then there's a brand new book. This one's so new, we actually don't have it out on the shelf yet, but it will be there shortly. Um, it's Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. And speaking of adventure, um, when his traditional Latinx family has problems accepting his true identity, trans boy Yadriel becomes determined to prove himself a real brujo, ready to take his place in the family business of dealing with a cemetery full of ghosts. With the help of his cousin and best friend Maritza, he performs the ritual himself and then sets out to find the ghost of his murdered cousin and set it free. But, whoops, the ghost he actually summons is Julian Diaz, the school's resident bad boy, and Julian doesn't want to go away until he finishes some business of his own. So uh, Yadriel reluctantly agrees to help him, uh, but the more he gets to know him, the less he maybe wants him to go away. So I have not read it, but uh, it's a well-reviewed story that it's steeped in Latinx culture while also being a cracking good supernatural romance. So that sounds like fun. And finally, You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson, which again, it's a brand new to us. I haven't read that one either. Um, but Liz Lighty wants nothing more to just stay than to stay out of the spotlight as a poor black, kind of awkward girl in a small, rich Midwestern town. She's kind of an outsider. Uh, but it's okay, she has a plan. She is going to go to the uber elite Pennington College, play in their orchestra, and become a doctor. But when the scholarship money she had counted on falls through, she has to try to find an alternate funding source. And it just so happens that this town she lives in is obsessed with prom, and so they give a good scholarship to the prom king and queen. So, despite her natural affinities, Liz decides to run. Um, and the only thing that really makes it halfway bearable is the new girl in, in school, Mac, who is, you know, smart and funny and also kind of an outsider. But Mac is also in the running for queen. So what happens when Liz falls for the competition? Right? Okay, fun. So there's, um, there are a lot more great YA books um, dealing with LGBTQIA plus kids in our collection. Um, we would be glad to recommend more to you. Uh, also some great graphic novels. So that's it for me this week. We will see you again soon.